Hello, 1010 students. Uh, this is Mr. C with lesson number seven. Uh, we're starting week four and we're going to have two lectures this week. So this is the first of those two. Uh, we'll be talking about the achievement gap, which is uh, pretty exciting. This is a cool topic. However, um, it's a little more difficult talking about online uh, because in our face-to-face -face class, we talked a lot about our own experiences and what how we have uh, seeing the achievement gap and and what we've seen in our own classrooms. So it'll be important that if you didn't have that face to face lecture, that you uh, hop onto the discussion boards and respond to the prompts. All right. So let's get into it. Maybe if I click my button, there we go. So the first thing we need to think about is what are ways that we might measure or whether or not students are successful in school. This is something that we've talked about over the last few weeks um, where we've been able to identify what a good teacher is and what a good school is, but what are the things that makes a student successful? You'll notice that I put as my image there on the background that there's a kid raising its hand. And in our face-to-face -face, um, sections, a lot of students talked about how students are successful if they're engaged, if they're learning. Um, but that doesn't tell us how we measure whether or not they're engaged or whether they're learning. So um, make sure you head over to the discussion boards and uh, comment on what are the things that you think we do to actually measure whether or not a student is engaged, whether or not a student is learning, um, how they're successful. All right. So I'm going to have you ask you to pause this right now, go to the discussion boards and answer that first prompt. I really need to get some Jeopardy music. That would be awesome. All right, welcome back. So now that you have responded to that prompt, I'm guessing that you said something about um, tests or grades or um, a pre or a post, things like that. That's typically what schools will do to measure success. However, um, we all look at success differently, right? Yeah. Some of it depends on our culture and our upbringing. So we might have different values. So for example, um, I might view you as successful, not if you just get a good grade in the class, but maybe if you create a friendship in the class, or maybe you would be successful if um, as a result of this class, your confidence and your ability to teach or your teaching efficacy goes up. And that's something that we don't typically measure, um, but it's something that would make me feel good about what you've accomplished in this class. Um, maybe I would feel you're successful if down the road, um, this was a class that helped you make the decision on whether or not you wanted to become a teacher and, and maybe what kind of teacher. So there's a lot of different ways that we might measure success. Um, if that's how we measure success, we have to think about how schools measure success. Um, now, again, this is an important question to think about. So I'm gonna want you to pause again, go back to the discussion board and write down um, what you think is a way that schools measure success. All right, welcome back. <laughs> now, schools typically measure success in the ways you would that we've talked about previously um, in test scores, right? So if their students are testing really well. But if we think about the success of like a high school, for example, that might also include the dropout rate or attrition rate. Um, it might include how many of those students go on to get higher education, whether that be in a university or college or maybe a trade school. Um, schools might measure success on how well they retain their teachers. So if teachers stay year after year and really like being at that school, that might be a, an indicator of success. Um, so there's a lot of different things that we might look at in measuring the success of a school. So giving those two things um, with what we've seen about students and what we've seen about schools, here's an important question. What is it that leads to that success? So the question as I've stated here is what are some of the advantages or disadvantage kids or students might face in having academic success? 
So we know that some of that is simply effort, right? So um, one thing that leads to student success is effort and it's independent of their background. However, there are a lot of things about our backgrounds that really, really, really matter. Um, and so that's why today we're gonna talk a little bit about this achievement gap. And this is gonna set up um, what we do for homework and, and how we lead into the next lesson. I have to keep moving myself because I made my face too big. All right, so thinking about the achievement gap, um, one activity that I had my students do in the face-to-face uh, -to -face is to just take five or 10 minutes to scour the internet. And so that's why we have the prompt here, look up uh, achievement gap. And here's something, I want you to do the same activity, but I'm gonna give you a few bonus tips. When you are searching for things online, um, and in an online class, obviously, we're doing a lot of that. Um, it helps to ask the right kinds of questions. And so if we're, we're looking up something like achievement gap, it's really easy to simply Google achievement gap. Um, and that's going to bring up some responses. You might get Wikipedia or some other reference um, materials. But it's not as useful in the context of this question, because you see at the bottom here, it says, um, write an explanation for what the achievement gap is and why it matters to teachers. And so as you search in Google, you might wanna be a little more clear about what question you're seeking to answer. And so you could actually ask that exact question. Uh, what is the achievement gap and why does it matter to teachers? Or you might say some combination of that. So think of how you might say that in your own words. Um, what impact does the achievement gap have on schools or how does the achievement gap affect students? Um, how does the achievement gap affect teachers, et cetera? So think about that as you're searching online. Um, I'm going to have a, for, for this class, rather than have this in the discussion board, this will be part of your graded work for this week. So this will be a quiz and it's just the, the one that's called quiz achievement gap. And you're simply going to write your three to five sentence explanation for this week's homework. Now, I recommend you do that sooner than later because that will um, prime you for what we'll talk about in our next class period. So before we sign off, um, let me talk a little bit about what else you can do. You're going to have two readings this week. One is, oh, what's the last name? Mooney. And it's simply a, a short um, article, an op-ed on why we say opportunity gap instead of achievement gap. So read that and answer the reflection questions. So that will be linked up in this uh, module. And then in addition to that, I want you to think about, and this is so good for an online section, I'm gonna have you read a lecture given by Thomas Plummer way back in 1990. Um, it's called Diagnosing and Treating the Ophelia Syndrome. And I was thinking about you students because one of the things that's really difficult about adjusting to college and uh, transitioning in this period of your life. Now, online, I know that I have a, a wide variety of people who are taking this class. So some of you aren't just transitioning to college. Some of you are still in high school. Um, also, others are transitioning to college. Others have been in college for a while, and then yet yeah, others have been out of college for a long time and now are coming back. So I recognize that I have a diverse population here. However, I still think that this is a great lecture for helping you think about why is it that you do what you do in preparation for school? Why is it that you do your homework in the way that you do it? Or why is it that you prepare for class in the way you do it? Whether that's doing things right away or procrastinating or putting in a full effort or saving that energy for some other activity. I want you to think about that. And so I'm giving you this uh, lecture by Thomas Plummer on the Ophelia syndrome, because this concept of uh, Ophelia um, is really important, um, especially in a class like this, where we're trying to discover a little bit about ourselves, but also where what's the role of schools in society. And so I'd like you to read that article. And then I just have a few questions um, in your quiz for the week that you can answer about the Ophelia syndrome. Actually, I think that one's in the reflection as well. So make sure you do both the quiz, the reflection, and the discussion board. Um, it's just a few things in each of those things. And then later in this week, I'll have a follow-up lecture on where we talk a little bit more about the Ophelia syndrome. And I'll be looking at your comments and commenting on what you have said. So make sure that you get those responses in there sooner than later. All right. Have a great week. Bye-bye.